Hey everybody, it's uh, MJ, and this is the YouTube channel where it's just plain fun all the time. And the topic of this video is going to be the Stanley number 45. And what you see before you is a large flat rate box of Stanley number 45 parts that I ordered from or bought from a gentleman out in California. And so we're going to try something different. I'm going to show you all an unboxing and I'm just going to talk about the number 45 in general. This is all going to be just off the cuff. So, you know, there'll probably be some misspeaks, some misspeaks, there'll be some corrections along the way, but you get the idea. So let's dive into it. All right. So the books that you see out there at the top, you got Dave Heckel's uh, book on the, it's an extensive type study or look at the type study for the number 45s. And then that other book in the middle there is actually a reprint from the Astrogal Press, which I highly recommend if you're really into number 45s or number 55s or both combination planes in general. I definitely recommend picking up a copy of that. I got mine on Amazon. I don't know if there's any still on there because I haven't looked lately. But I definitely recommend picking up a copy of that because it's pretty much most, if not all, of the original paperwork that was included in with the number 45s and 55s so it's kind of a how-to for using and how to set up the plane etc uh, etc et so as you can see uh, it's a pretty decent job packing here we got a little open space which if you've watched my video on packing planes you know that we tend we don't want open space if we can avoid it but this is what we've got and so you can see you've got a couple blade boxes here and by the way pretty much all of this is going to be for sale as far as i know from talking to the gentleman that sold this stuff to me there are no complete planes in here but plenty of parts so this will all be coming up and as a side note to that these are the whole idea was this guy's been collecting and rebuilding number 45s for a while and he just kind of got burned out on it and so this is kind of his spare inventory stuff and he just sold everything to me at wholesale so that I can get it into your hands. This is box one of three. And I can tell that this is not one of the more exciting boxes. This is um, one that has, it looks like a lot of bodies, a lot of skates and some fences. And so originally I was only going to open one box. And this is kind of an experimental YouTube video idea anyway. But I think after seeing this box, and I'm probably going to open another one because I want to show you guys some of the individual parts. But just in case you're not over, overly familiar with 45s, of course, that's a, a skate there. It's been stripped down, so there's no thumb screws there. The spur and screw are gone. And then there's another screw that goes for holding the either the beating stop or the small depth stop that goes there. So skates. It looks like skates. So we'll set that one to the side. This looks like maybe a skate and a fence. So let's see what we've got here. This is one that was probably rusted pretty bad. You can see it's a B casting there. It's also been stripped down. But the reason why I say it was probably rusted real bad because I'm betting that this was soaked in evaporust and then probably was not treated afterwards or, you know, they didn't bother, you know, the didn't take the, the film off of there. Nothing against the guy that did this. I mean, it is what it is. I'm just making observations. And then here's a part of a fence. And that's another B casting there. This is one where the nickel has been stripped off. So somebody probably used kind of an aggressive technique there when they took that nickel plating off. That's what causes that look right there. Obviously still serviceable, just not the best looking thing. I'm actually glad this came up because this is the old design for this knob on the fence. And this was definitely a weak point on these older ones right here. This one, I'm guessing, has been fixed on there with some type of, you can kind of see where there's some kind of, maybe some threading or something in there because it's so common for these to be stripped out. And so folks would just, you know, use some type of sealant back in the day to put that back on and honestly i wouldn't even take this off i would if i was going to sell this i'd just put the rest of it back together and just sell it as is and we'll just call that good because they are broken so often and stripped out the later models obviously stanley identified that this was an issue so they put a bolt down through the center and that was a, a big improvement on those so looks like more fences there 
Let's look at a couple main bodies here and then we'll probably pause it and move on to another box that's got pieces in it. <laughs> Sorry about my sniffles there. Like I said, this is all kind of impromptu. I'm speaking extemporaneously. So, not that I ever have a script, but this one pretty messed up there with the handle. And this one's pretty well been stripped down, but you can see we got a good spur right there, spur and screw that looks relatively unused. I'm not sure if any of those points have ever even been sharpened before. So if you're ever in the market for those, the spur is the same as what's on a number 78. The screw is shorter. And these go for in like the 10 to $11 range, especially one that's barely been used like that. So if I'm able to get that screw out without messing it up, which I think I probably can, that's about what that goes for in case you ever need one. There's another body also been stripped down. You can see it's a B casting and you see the same where the, the finish has been removed, but it's been done relatively aggressively. That's why it's got kind of that gold or almost copper look to it. This one, the, the handle is pretty messed up too. So that one probably is not going to make it back into service, but you know, somebody could hang it on a wall or something. All right, so let's open one more. This looks like fence parts or fence pieces. So that's actually a pretty, well, it's a decent rosewood fence. It's got a little split down the center there. But all in all, you could seal that up with some CA glue. Or maybe if you wanted to get fancy, put some, some sawdust or something in there and seal that up. But that's a, a serviceable enough fence. And I do have a few of those. Another thing is if you don't have a use board on a 45, and it's chewed up on one end. I wouldn't necessarily do it with a decent one like this, but if you got one that's real chewed up, that makes good stock for repairing totes if you need a small part of it. But again, only if it's otherwise chewed up and, and not the best. So maybe something like that could be used to uh, repair a tote or something because it'll be tough to return it to service on a 45. Here's one of the long rods. Super common to see these pitted, but they still work and actually this one's really really not bad at all so in the next box i'm sure there'll be more rods there so that's kind of an overview first box that was a little anti-climatic but let's move on to box two haha <laughs> just kidding i would do want to go ahead and show y'all that is a primo label right there i don't know how many 45s y'all have seen i've seen uh more than my fair share of them because i did kind of specialize in accommodation planes for a while but that is honestly one of the prettiest and most complete labels that i've ever seen I and mean, that's really solid i might see if i can find a lid that will match that box because it's a pretty nice label so this one right here is 28 pounds of goodness and so it'll be interesting to see what all is in this one if you're not overly familiar with shipping a large flat rate box sent internationally can hold up to legally they'll ship it if it's 20 pounds or less 20 us pounds in weight for domestic shipments you can go up to 70 pounds and so this one's coming in at 28.8 obviously well within the range but i'm sure your carrier probably gets tired of lifting my carrier probably gets tired of lifting heavy packages so let's see what we've got here. Looks like some more bodies. I hope somebody, nobody takes that out of context. I'm um, looking for parts because that's what we want to talk about. Oh, there's some, some irons. I've actually got a couple pending deals out there right now where some folks are looking for some irons. So here we go. See what we got so this is kind of for the if you're not familiar with it crowd we've got some hollows and rounds right here there's an there's there are nosing attachments for those to employ them more efficiently but they can also be used without the nosing attachment i think it works better with it uh, these are beading irons right here and i think there's in one of these boxes there's a a beading stop that i'll show y'all and of course you've got your tongue and groove here and that's what one of my customers is looking for 
as a side note to that, if you've never really messed with these before, if you haven't done tongue and groove with a 45, there's a misconception out there that you're going to use the matching iron for that that's going to fit in there and fill that space. That is not correct. You want one that's actually a little bit smaller, so that way it accounts for expansion on that for the wood to uh, expand and contract. So uh, a bunch of beading stops here. What is that the the sash sash plane for like doing windows the old school way so well hopefully there's a, a little skinny guy there because that's what i'm looking for but i'll come back to that later let's see what else is in here looks like more skates hey there's some parts that's what we're looking for right there let's open this guy up It's actually not for a 45, that's off of a transitional plane right there, a little short knob. So there's your captive depth stop that goes on the right side of the main body. This is a, one of the many reasons to buy this particular book right here because it's got all this good stuff from the Astrical Press. And there's the little info on there. It's a reprint. Obviously, it's not worth a bunch of money, but you can see you got the illustrated parts breakdown here. So this is these are parts number 70 and 71. So adjustable depth gauge and then the nut that goes on at 70 and 71. If you order parts from me, if you can find this on the Internet, which is very easy to find, it's the easiest way for us both to be speaking the same language when you're ordering parts. So definitely look that up, even if you don't get the book. I call it a cap captive depth, depth stop, but as you can see, the book calls it the adjustable depth gauge. So there's one of the new style of knobs that I was telling you about that has the bolt that goes down through the center and then a barrel nut. So this is the cam rest. See a lot of questions about these out there about what the purpose of them for or purpose of them is, and it's for specifically for center beating work. I mean, I'm sure there's other uses for it, but for center beating, oh, there's a slitter that unfortunately is not in the best of shape. There's the slitter depth stop. All of this is on the illustrated parts breakdown. Let's see what else. Oh, there we go. So, Paul, if you're watching, oh, no, that's not it. So there's two different styles of these slitters. There's the ones with the patent date. These are worth at least $25, sometimes more um, to a motivated buyer. I've seen them sell for as much as 40. And those were only used on the early ones, obviously, once they stopped putting the patent date on there. It was just a plain slitter. And so the later ones are not worth as much. There's another one that one looks like non-patented so these usually sell for around twenty dollars a piece for the non-patented ones if they're in acceptable condition there's another knob that goes on the fence in the later styles and another slitter depth stop these usually sell for anywhere from the ten to twenty dollar range on ebay sometimes they'll go a little bit higher just because they're so frequently missing a lot of folks when they bought their 45 Apparently just went in and took that slitter and slitter depth stop off and then never put it back on. So it ends up getting put in a drawer somewhere and then the 45 gets moved along or sold years later at an estate sale or something and the parts have long since been lost to history. So here's the beating depth stop that I was telling you about. And this one's obviously in pretty bad shape. I mean, it could probably still be used, but I mean, it's sure no, uh, no beauty queen. And so, in the book, once again, another good reason to get to pick up this book. This has got the configurations for how you want to set them up. Like here, we were talking about the depth stop, or excuse me, the uh, cam rest here. It shows what it looks like for doing center beating work. And as you can see, this is one of those little known configurations. The fence is actually turned around backwards. So, that's why the fence is shaped that way. I don't have one handy here to show you, but so you can see we're doing beading work. We've got our depth stop 
lowered here. You've got your cam rest, and as you're lowering, as your your center B, and I should do another video that shows this, but as that groove is getting deeper into the wood, you can actually roll the cam rest back. And that's probably not the clearest description, but we'll do another one. But right here, there's your, your beading stop. So this is another configuration for beading matched boards. You actually don't use the fence. You use the beading depth stop there, and that acts as more or less as your fence there. So the beading depth stop and then the small depth stop are definitely good to have the small one is arguably that's right there is arguably the most important depth stop to have when you're shopping for a 45. all right so i opened up another package here off camera just so y'all wouldn't have to watch me struggle with that bubble wrap but you can see this is an older one one of the indicators is the floral pattern but that's not the only indicator the best indicator is the fact that the knob is on the main body Whereas later that moved over to the fence, which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But for typing these, one of the good places to start is right down here. I don't know how well you can read that, but you can start there. And then there's a number of other indicators, which if you have Heckel's book, that's probably the easiest way. Or if you know somebody that has it, it's probably the easiest way to be able to identify the type because he shows actual pictures of it. If I'm not violating any copyright stuff there, but this is another one still has the floral pattern But as you can see the knob has been moved over to the fence for this one. It's another bee casting super super common and then it's actually fairly hard to read but from You know early one 1884 and then a later one looks like what, 95 96 Tom Rager on uh, combination plane headquarters on Facebook is Probably one of the most knowledgeable guys, if not the most knowledgeable guy other than Dave Heckle himself. But the reason why I wanted to show you, one of the reasons why I want to show you this is it's pretty common for these cam rests, which you all saw me open here, for that to be missing this screw. There is a unique screw that goes there, but it's the same, almost the same. The differences are nominal as the set screws that go here that hold the fence in place on the main body. And so you can use that screw and then there's actually a brass insert and a nice soft metal. So it's not gonna tear stuff up. So there's a brass insert. This is an aftermarket one that, that uh, Mike Muscat made uh, a handful of them for me and he's actually making some more because it's the last one that I have. Um, finding an original one, you might as well just buy the whole cam rest. You might as well buy the whole 45 before you go search and trying to find an original one. You're better off just using the aftermarket and then of course just grab another set screw which i sell all of these of course and so that's the deal there for being able to lock the camera in place I mean, unless you're a number 45 power user who's doing center beating work um i mean you're probably not going to use this this is one of those things if you buy an incomplete 45 unless you're just obsessed over completing it and having a complete tool this is not something that you need definitely not something you need right away but something you can invest in down the road or specifically if you're doing center beating by all means you know go grab one but they sell for in the you know 20 to 30 dollar range sometimes higher if they're really minty which this one clearly is not but you know i'd probably get at least 20 22 dollars for something like that all right so i took a break and i opened the third box because there were a total of three of these large flat rate boxes if you follow me on facebook or on the just plain fun the parts division uh, Facebook page you already know that but I do have a couple other things that I want to cover I want to do a whole series of videos on the 45 and show you know how to set it up how to use it that kind of stuff but that's a video for another day but I do want to talk about a couple other things this is actually a really really early fence this was from before they even put the rosewood on it and one of the indicators is also this old school screw right here the thumb screws which if it was a type 1 that wouldn't even have the screw slot in there that was actually added a little bit later. But that's a really early fence there. Um, some of the other early or signs of early ones is if the body was Japan, which I believe this one was once upon a time. That one's obviously seen better days. Here's a really early, and I haven't looked these up to see exactly what tape they are, and I don't want to misspeak. Tom would probably yell at me. But, uh, you know, you got the beaded front knob, 
That's an indicator that it's an early one is just the 1884 patent date, not the one from the 90s. So we know that's a relatively early one, probably somewhere in the, you know, probably type three, type four range if I was a guessing man, but I would have to look it up to be sure. Somebody will smack me and correct me on that. But as a side note, this knob right here is actually the same one that will go on your 48s and 49s. So as far as being able to mix and match parts if you need a front knob 48 49 46 um, 47 you know same i don't know anything about the 47 so if you ever need a front knob just know that that's an option and then what else was i going to talk about one of the big takeaways if you're still watching this video and you're interested in 45 you're thinking about getting into them one of the biggest takeaways from this it is not uncommon to find this or something really close to this configuration in the wild. And folks will be asking 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars or more for this. And I am begging you, as a parts guy, as somebody who, you know, has a side hustle selling parts, do not buy this. Do not pay 60, 70, 80 dollars for this because I promise you you're gonna spend another 150, 200 dollars just trying to buy parts. I mean I keep my prices low specifically for this purpose especially if you're buying a bunch of stuff but you're going to need the the cam rest that i talked about you're going to need the slitter depth stop if you want it to be complete you're going to need uh the both the depth stops your beading stop and your small depth stop that mount right here this screw is missing which is super super frequent this is the micro adjust fence that i'll talk about here in a minute but this screw right here is so often missing this is not the correct one uh look you're missing a spur back there so it's got the screw but the spur i don't know if you can see that but the spur is missing so you're gonna have to replace that and then the set of blades you know the, a lot of times folks will advertise this but it won't have any any irons or any blades with it except for the one that was in it when the plane was retired and so you're gonna spend easily a hundred dollars probably on a set of decent blades so i am imploring you do not spend 60 70 80 dollars on this setup right here and if you have you know because you didn't necessarily know any better i'm not calling you out i'm not implying anything i'm just making a statement for folks that maybe haven't done that do not spend a bunch of money hold out and wait and buy one that is nearly complete if it has to be missing something have it missing the cam rest have it missing the slitter have it missing the original screwdriver the paperwork stuff like that don't have it missing major components like depth stops like uh spurs which i mean those are relatively cheap but once you start adding all this stuff up and that's my point so i do want to talk more about this um about this micro adjust fence so when you go to employ this thing and i'll talk more about this in the video that i do on the 45 what you want to do when you're setting everything when you're setting your skate into place to to support your iron when you're setting your fence where you want it, when you're setting your main body, you want all of these set screws to all be loose at the same time. And then you're gonna get it generally set where you want it. And when you're close and you'll have it, you know, sitting on your stock and lined up and all that good stuff, then you're gonna tighten everything down. You want everything to be loose because that's what's gonna allow everything to move to slide on the rods as it should, okay? And then once you're locked into place, or once you get it close, then you're going to lock it down. The benefit of this micro adjust fence is if you need to move that just a little bit at a time, you know, a 16th of an inch in order to get your iron. So you're doing tongue and groove work and you want to move your iron just a little bit left and right, whatever or you're doing um, any kind of cut and you want to just make a fine adjustment. That's the benefit of the micro adjust fence. And this is one of those, this is one of those tools that you're better off investing in a later one or if you have an early one invest in a micro adjust fence because they do retrofit on the older ones so highly highly recommend this micro adjust fence will make a big difference when you're using this plane on a regular basis so in the third box got a bunch of short rods and long rods and these are in addition to the ones that i already have in stock so if anybody happens to need long rod short rods the short ones for whatever reason always seem to be the ones that are missing or at least the most often. Here's a shoulder screw on your 45. This is gonna to go to your slitter and slitter depth stop, which I think I showed y'all. It goes right here on your slitter, slitter depth stop. 
Incidentally, same shoulder screw is used on the 55 for its slitter and slitter depth stop, but also on the tower assembly. And so pretty common little dude. These sell for as high as $18, $20 a piece on eBay. I always try and keep those cheaper. You'll, I've, I've got some listed on eBay for more in the 10 to $15 range, depending on condition. Um, the slitter, while we're on that topic, this is a really another common thing. People ask what that thing is for. And of course you can look in the book and you can look it up, but you want to have that thing be really, really sharp. The idea is it's supposed to be sharpened and then you're, you cut like thin veneer with it. And so using the fence, which is not the best way to show this, but using the fence set against your stock, you can actually cut thin veneer with a nice sharp slitter and not have to worry about getting your saw out. Obviously we're talking about, you know, hand tool work here. And to be honest with that fence in place, you could probably cut a straighter line with a nice sharp slitter than you could with a handsaw or at least some people could unless you're really proficient with a handsaw i guess and then this is just a little box of goodies right here a couple of things to talk about here this wing nut that actually holds the the blade in place super super common for these to be sheared off like that right there so this is what it's supposed to look like but if you don't loosen everything the way you're supposed to and you keep cranking on that then it's going to shear it off like that so those sell pretty frequently. These are the older style. I think I talked about that, the older style screws. Just a ton of them in here. The early, early ones were brass, and so they're a little more sought after for the super early 45s. Just a bunch of good stuff here. That's the knob screw that holds the knob for the later model ones. And I don't know, you see anything else interesting in there? Shoot me a question. If you need any of this stuff, also let me know on that too these pointed the pointed ones like that that's a kind of a more pronounced point than they usually are but those are for the fence and then that's as opposed to the ones that have the the flatter end they're for a different spot on the plane so some good stuff there and other than that oh here's now oh, that's a new style one so i'm gonna pause get my thoughts together and then i think we're gonna wrap this up all right, so that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about the 45. Or maybe you did want to know that because maybe you're getting into them or you're already into them, whatever. Um, this is my user 45. This is, did not come in this box. And I don't know, maybe I'm just showing up. But the main thing I want to show you is this right here. That's what that set screw is supposed to look like on your micro adjust fence. So you're going to make your, you're going to loosen that, that little dude up. You're going to make your final adjustment to get the screw or you get the fence exactly where you want it. And then you're going to tighten this guy down and that is going to keep your fence from migrating on you while you're actually using it so and i'll cover that when i do a video someday about how to use the 45. not that i'm an expert but i've got a little bit of experience with it and there are some other videos out there i know wood by right has a good video out there on using the 45. a lot of people get frustrated with this because it does take some time to set up but once you do have it set up I think it goes, you know, pretty smoothly and it does take some getting used to, but eventually you learn how to, how to hold it and how to best apply pressure in order to keep it going the way you want it to. And as a side note, Roy Underhill has a pretty good video on pbs.org on combination planes. So definitely working or worth looking up the Woodwright shop on pbs.org. And then here is one of the whatever notorious notoriously missing screwdrivers this is actually an older one and this is one from my personal collection definitely not included in these three boxes but just for fun and tom rager actually just put up a post recently on combination plane headquarters on facebook about the screwdrivers because he actually has one of each plane of each type of the 45 and as of this filming that's with the exception of the aluminum one but definitely get into combination plane headquarters if you're not already on facebook because that is the best facebook group for combination planes where the we're the most active and share your adventures with us over there at combination plane headquarters so as always thanks everybody for watching i do appreciate it. if you have any questions about 45s by all means or 55s you know, let us know between myself and Tom Rager and a few other folks. We can answer your questions. 
And of course, if you need any parts for a 45, definitely let me know and I will get you hooked up. Thanks for watching.